Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to install Android Marshmallow. It's 6.0.1. It has working Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi 3. Now this only works for the Raspberry Pi 3. This will not work for the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 0. Uh, to get started, we're going to need a few things. First thing you'll need is Win32 Disk Imager. Now this is free software easy to use. It's been downloaded millions of times and this is the go-to software to flash any Raspberry Pi image to an SD card. Go ahead and download it here. It's free, quick, easy to install. Next thing I recommend is go ahead and get yourself SD card formatter. Now this will allow you to format your card correctly. After you flash an image uh, for the Raspberry Pi onto an SD card. If you want to reuse that card for something else, be it your Android phone or a digital camera, um, this is the software you will need to reformat it to to bring it back to the stock capacity of the card. And finally, we are going to need the Android image for the Raspberry Pi 3. Now this is provided by Geek Tell It Hurts. He's awesome, he's got his own YouTube channel and he does a lot of great stuff with the Raspberry Pi. Um, download right here, Mediafire link. So just go ahead, it's a quick download, it's only 193 megabytes. So I've already downloaded it, I've placed it in a folder on my desktop named Pi 3 Android. We need to unzip it, so we're going to extract the image. We are done extracting the image. You should have a file that looks like this. This is your disk image file. Now it's 7.7 .7 gigabytes after we extracted it, which was pretty crazy compression, if you ask me. So it's a pretty, it's 7.4 gigabytes altogether. It's a pretty big file after, after you have extracted it. Okay, so let's take and flash this image to our SD card. I have a clean 16 gigabyte SD card. And I have formatted it FAT32. I have used my SD formatter to format the card. So if you have a fresh card, this should work for you. Open your Win32 Disk Imager. And this is uh, what Win32 Disk Imager looks like. It's super simple. Right here is the device we're going to flash to. So this is my SD card. Make sure this is the correct file path to your SD card or your correct drive letter. My SD card is F. Click on the blue folder. Now we're going to navigate to the extracted Marshmallow image file. The one you just extracted, it's 7.4 gigabytes. Just double click on that. I'm gonna hit right. Now this can take a little while depending on the speed of your computer, your SD card or your SD card reader. Bear with it, this is seven gigs being transferred and written to your SD card. So this could take a bit of time. Yes. So the write was successful. We have successfully flashed the Android image to our SD card. We are now going to move to the Raspberry Pi. I have a keyboard and mouse combo plugged into the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm going to insert my SD card. I just flashed the Android image to. I will show you how to get your IP address. We're going to come back to the PC and I will show you an easy way to sideload apps over your network. You are going to need to be connected to the same network on your Raspberry Pi 3 and the PC that you want to transfer uh, your apps from. Go into the Pi now.
So we're booting up the Raspberry Pi with the newly flashed SD card inserted. This can take up to five minutes on the first boot of Android. Bear with it. First time it took me four minutes and 30 seconds to boot. But after that, it should boot up in under a minute. I'm gonna fast forward this for you. It's done booting. And this, this boot took four minutes and 28 seconds. This was the first boot after I installed Android onto the SD card. So just keep in mind that it will take a bit to boot. The first time after that, it should boot in a minute or under one minute. Now I have my keyboard and mouse combo connected to the Raspberry Pi. We don't have many apps installed. This comes with pretty much nothing. I'm going to go to my app drawer here. We have calculator, calendar, clock, contacts, downloads, email, gallery, messages, you know, the basic of the basic. And we have a web view browser, which will allow us to um, browse the internet. But that's about it. I want to install Kodi in Chrome. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. We're going to need to go to the computer. But before we go to the computer, we need to configure our Wi-Fi. We need to obtain our IP address. And we need to turn um, ADB debugging on. We'll go to settings. Scroll down to developer options. You need to find USB debugging. I know I just uh, scrolled past it really quick. USB debugging. Now this will also allow um, network debugging. So we want that checked on. We'll go back. Scroll back to the top here. Wi-Fi. I just set up my network. Um, it's very simple, just like any Wi-Fi. Just add the Wi-Fi connection, put in your password, and it will connect for you. Now, in order for us to transfer or to sideload apps onto the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi needs to be connected to the same network as the computer you are transferring your APKs to. So they need to be on the same exact network. If you're wired on any of them, it needs to be in the same network. If you're wireless on both, same network. From here, we need to find our IP address. The three dots at the top here. Click on those. Advanced. And at the bottom here will be your IP address. Write this down, take a picture of it, remember it. You're going to need it to sideload apps onto your Raspberry Pi running Android. Yours will be different from mine, so just remember yours. I just took a picture of mine real quick with my phone, and I will remember that IP address. We're going to go back to the computer now. We have to be on the same network with the Raspberry Pi and the computer. Now this is super simple. I will show you how to install apps from your computer to your Raspberry Pi. If you want to exit this screen, as you notice, we don't have any on-screen back or home buttons. On your keyboard, press exit or escape and it will bring you back. It's just like your back key. We're going to move to the computer now. Leave your Raspberry Pi on, running Android, and connected to the Wi-Fi network. All right, I'm back at the PC. I'm on the same exact network as my Raspberry Pi, and I remembered my IP address from my Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and collect the APKs or the apps that you would like to install. For me, I'm going to install Kodi in Chrome. This link will be in the description. Now this is very easy to use. I know it says this is the Amazon Fire TV utility app, 
but this will work with any Android device as long as you have the IP address. And it's way easier than going into your command line and typing out your show ADB devices, push your apps over. This, this will just simplify everything. This is pretty much UI for ADB. I've downloaded it. I've extracted it. I'm going to open it up. Now, first thing I want to do is run ADB. This will run in the background. Next, I want to open up my Amazon Fire TV utility app. From here, File, Settings, and type in your IP address. Mine was 192-168-10-129. Make sure this is checked here. Save and close. At the bottom, you can see we are connected to 192-168-10-129. Your IP address will be different. It could be the same, but it may be different. So just remember your IP address. Type it into settings and make sure this is checked. So we're connected to the Raspberry Pi now. This is the easiest way I found to transfer ROMs or to I'm sorry, to install APKs on your Raspberry Pi running Android. Right here at the top, make sure sideload and install APK files is listed here. We're going to check, we're going to click on select and just navigate to where your APKs are stored. I'm going to install Kodi. Now Kodi is loaded here. Sideload third-party application. Click this. Bear with it. This will finish as long as you have set it up correctly like I showed you. It's saying the system cannot find the path specified. Just give it a minute or two. It will transfer and install the file. It's going to take a second. Now the best thing to do is look at your Raspberry Pi and there's a little green light. If it's flashing every one second, you know something's working. Something's going on in that little CPU there. Cody is about, I want to say 40 megabytes. And what it's doing, there we go. It's taking the package. It's installing the APK to my Raspberry Pi now. And depending on the size of the app, this can take up to three minutes. So just bear with it. It will install your app. As long as you are connected to the same network and you have the correct IP address as your Raspberry Pi, this will install the application that you would like to install. What it's doing, successfully installed Kodi. Now, I'm going to select my Chrome APK. I'm going to hit sideload third-party application. Like I said, this is normal. If you don't get any other errors underneath here, it's working. Let it sit. It will go through and it will work. Took that one one or uh, sixty-eight seconds to transfer and extract the APK. It is now installing. It successfully installed Chrome onto my Raspberry Pi. All of the links for everything will be in the description. I'm using the Amazon Fire TV utility app to sideload my APKs over network. I'm going to move back to the Raspberry Pi and show you that Chrome and Kodi is installed. Back at the Raspberry Pi. So I haven't touched anything from when we left 
We went to the computer. We installed Kodi in Chrome. Click on your application bar. You now have Chrome and Kodi installed. This will work with most any app that is compatible with Marshmallow. Now, if it's going to run on the Raspberry Pi is a different story. I know that Chrome and Kodi run on the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, running Android, but I've tried several other applications and a lot of them did not work. Angry Birds worked. If you guys got time, let me know what application what applications do work on the Raspberry Pi running Android. I've been able to test about 12 apps and out of the 12, five of them have run. That's it guys. That's how you install Android Marshmallow on your Raspberry Pi 3 and sideload applications onto it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you guys could, let me know what apps do work with the Raspberry Pi 3 running Android. I just do not have time to test all the apps. If you've got something in mind you want to test, let me know if it works down below. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. It really keeps me going. And like always, thanks for watching.